FOMC, non-farm payrolls, and underpriced risk. That's the theme for this week's Markets in Profile Weekly Outlook from the team here at TradeTheProfile.com for the week of January 29, 2023. Hey, everybody. I'm Josh. I'm founder of Trade the Profile. We are a skill development firm for traders looking to develop skills and develop their playbook, primarily expressed in intraday futures via the ES, NASDAQ, Russell, and Crude. And this is just kind of where we start each week, uh, looking at key levels, looking at expectations this week versus last week, doing some review, uh, fine-tuning the system so that we are not caught off guard as we go in to each day. So uh, with that being said, we're going to launch right in here and start with kind of where we uh, typically like to start, and that is just kind of taking a macro look um, at where we are overall. And uh, the place that I'm going to start uh, today is around this idea of underpriced risk and something that's been you know really remarkable in the first month here of 2023 has been how participants have or have not been reaching for protection in equities as we as we've moved basically just from the you know the yearly open higher and we're moving towards some pretty significant prices as as far as where we are so these are the anchored VWAPs we've been talking about these uh, for years weeks prior for the SPY uh, for 21 and 22 um, this is the COVID low uh, anchored VWAP and then this is the anchored VWAP so far for this year um, you can no notice this large composite zone to 394, and essentially we're basically just trading in a bracket, um, and so we're we're pushing up to this bracket. So, you know, for those out there that, from a macro perspective, are like, "Hey, the bottom's in," uh, you know, the the Fed's Fed's going to pivot, and uh, we're going to have the quote unquote soft landing relative to inflation. I mean, that narrative can still still be in play. Uh, for those who are like, "Hey, we haven't even begun to see the low." Hey, guess what? that narrative can still be in play too. So uh, it, this is a kind of a murky spot where we are, and we're going to get a lot more clarity, I think, after we get the FOMC statement this week and see non-farm payrolls as well. Things that we're going to be watching. So regardless of whatever your perspective is, regardless of whatever your uh, you know bias is, and we're going to talk about bias here in a little bit, is watching key inventory levels and levels that are likely to bring a counter reaction. So as long as we're above the year-to-date VWAP, I say that as a you know supporting the buyers as long as we're above this key inventory level here at 394 395 i see that as supportive to the buyers um i see question mark up here uh that's a spot that's likely to bring some type of reaction um be be mindful of there you know if we test above these areas and then reject that could bring in the other thing that i'm i'm curious about is just how uh, really non-directional the, the combined VIX curve is. Now, we've seen an inverted curve on the short term, but unlike in the past where this is driven primarily by puts being purchased, this has been call buying. So the, the VIX can rise on call volatility or put volatility. This has primarily been call volatility. So even though we're inverted, this doesn't mean that anybody is really hedged up going into this release. So we don't really have a whole lot of clarity other than there really isn't a lot of protection to the downside. So uh, what we've seen in the past through 2021, 2022, is that we go into these large macro events and we would find people reach for protection. It'll be yet to be seen if they go and grab that on Tuesday before the FOMC or if we you know, leave this you know, really unprotected, specifically more in the longer term curve, which is where we've seen people buy you know, longer term uh, position, especially if they think out of the FOMC that this is going to lead us on that next leg lower, they may reach for that. And if we see the the long end of the curve go inverted as well, um, that could be in response to prices going this way. So we're just going to have to wait and see how that plays out. But still, on the combined curve, very unclear. You know, we, we get real good clarity when we're at the edges, and uh, we have not been really to either edge yet in 2023. So waiting for that big signal. But big week macro in terms of how is the Fed reading what's happening with inflation? Have we seen lower inflation? Absolutely. Uh, it's still 7% plus gang. <laughs> it's, still, it's still remarkably high. So uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. Okay, with that, let's jump over and start talking about the calendar and just the other uh, potential catalysts that we have this week and uh, what we've got to look for um, as we get into the week ahead. And I'm going to get rid of... Uh, something out of my way here, uh, just so I can see what we're doing. Got too much in front of my face. All right. Or on my screen. Economic calendar this week. Uh, really, uh, you know, the big thing is going to be FOMC. We do have uh, some CPI data, inflation data out of Europe on Wednesday. But um, aside from just 
some minor releases. I mean, I'm really looking at Wednesday. We have, you know, ISM data. We've got crude oil inventories. We've got FOMC statement decision. That's going to be huge. Wednesday is going to be the big day. Uh, Thursday, we've got jobless claims. Uh, we do have some central bank speech as well. And then on Friday, we have non-farm payrolls. So we've got non-farm payrolls on Friday. Now, the other thing that we have um, on Thursday, we have Apple, Amazon, and uh, Google all report earnings. So we've got FOMC month end, and then we've got big tech earnings, and then we've got non-farm payrolls. It's going to be you know pretty pretty spicy this week. So if you like stuff moving, this is your week to, <laughs> to have that happen. Okay. So with that, uh, we know kind of what the the big catalysts are. Let's now start talking about the specific prices that we want to look at. And uh, we'll start here by looking at the long-term chart on the ES. Now, uh, where are we? We are above the most traded price of 2022. Um, this is good. And we have you know, really been moving higher. However, this is where that, that murky signal gets. We're still inside of the profile of Q4. Um, we're, we're supportive so long as we can hold, you know, kind of 4K. Um, and then there's, you know, kind of a, a spot down here to 38. Um, that could be choppy below 38, and that puts us on a path down here. And, you know, typically, you know, when we think about, you know, an auction that's been moving lower like this, you know, the, if, the, if the first move is higher, that's typically not one that sustains. Um, as a behaviorist, I can tell you that that's, that's typically not the one that sustains. Now, however, we can see that we, you know, had a push and then failed to make a new low. And that's why some of these technicians would say, hey, well, if we can break out here, we're moving higher. Totally in play next target up would be up towards like the 4350 area if that was to be in play. But really 4200, you can see here is a big node. That's, that's kind of the next destination. That's the top of this larger bracket that we're in. And if we start by looking at, you know, kind of where we are on a, uh, a monthly profile, um, first let's just kind of review um, how last week played out. And I've got a, a new slide that uh, we'll look at each week just to kind of give us an idea of what was the plan last week. And then we can look at how it played out and then look at the plan for the following week. And if you want to print these out and have these available, be my guest. But last week we were looking for buyer's control above uh, 3,900 to 3,930 with the key reference of 4013. We had uh, Microsoft, Tesla earnings, and then GDP and had the expected range of 3,885 to 4,091. We were likely to see either 3,860 or 4,014 this week as the auction looks to bring composite value back together. So um, as we go and look at uh, where we are, so here is that, you know, 4,014. In fact, we can go look at the um, last week's last week's profile. So here was here was the close last week, and we we had 4014. We we're like, hey, if we can get, you know, we're going to go here, or we're going to go down to 3860 because that's where our, our value references were to pull value together. Ultimately, what would we do? We went back to 4014, and we pulled composite value up to that spot. So, um, in in general, uh, played out. Now, as far as the coming week, you know, if we look here and see where we are, we've got value kind of clustered here around 4K to 4027. Uh, so 40, 4K to 4032 is is pretty key. Uh, nice slope to the VWAP of the month so far above the 2022 VWAP. Now, the, the we're starting to see what I would call the slope of hope is that as the auction is moving higher, we're getting diminished inventory. So as we come into the week, going looking at the weekly chart, um, you'll notice that as we moved higher, we did not pull the most traded price of the week up with us. So 4032 is the key reference. Um, if we move immediately higher, looking for the auction to come back in this direction, uh, if we come lower first, then we'll look for you know a push and could easily go you know pushing towards that 4200 level. So as far as kind of the plan uh, for this week, uh, where we have Buyers above 400 or 4,000 in 4032. We've got FOMC, Apple, Amazon, Google, you know, non-farm pearls, a lot of huge stuff. Expecting 39.78 to 41.89, um, you know, in a larger bracket from 36.50 to 4,300. Above 40, uh, I mean, that shouldn't be 4,300, 4,200. Above 4K, and we're looking for the top of that bracket at 4,200. Failure below 4K starts pushing us back towards 39.15. So what does that look like? So that says, 
and we, we really kind of have to go looking at the longer term chart here to kind of get a sense of where we are. So here's that, that 3650. Let me put this bracket here. So here's this larger bracket that we're in, right? And so looking for us to push and test. Now, bracket rules would suggest as we get to the top of the bracket, we'd look for the kickback lower. Um, and if we go higher first, watch for a response up there, and then that kicks us back here. And if we can't hold the composite value here, that now puts us on a path back toward the middle of the bracket, ultimately could send us towards the bottom of the bracket here. All right, so that's that's the expectation. But as far as like, you know, weekly expected uh, ranges, we're really looking to be in a range from here to here this week uh, with that 4,000 to 432 key. Buyers are holding court above that. I, I ideally would like to see early selling to find better spots to be long. If we push higher first, then I like it to be uh, short for the inventory correction. So that's the ES. Let's look at the NASDAQ. Um, and what were we looking for last week? So we had uh, buyers controlling the auction uh, above 11,440. Um, we had Microsoft, Tesla, GDP. And then uh, we were <laughs> got kind of a kick save off of OPEX. Um, and so with inventory back above the five day, you know, only looking to fail on higher prices as inventory diminishes at price. What does that mean? It means that as the auction would move higher, so here's that, uh, get, the, get the right tool here. Um, so last week, most traded price is in here. We had the OPEX kick save that took us back to value, which said, hey, look, you know, we're most likely gonna keep moving higher um, unless we you know, quickly take back this buying excess. And that is exactly what we did, ultimately moving the five day up. Now, uh, where are we now? Um, this is where we've seen the really, really aggressive call buying. You can see the five days here at 11, uh, 9.35-ish, uh, closed above two standard deviations of monthly and weekly VWAP, very uh, low volume, 20 days down here. So this is what we call an extreme posture, where as the auction is going higher, we're getting fewer and fewer participants. So where that puts us is that as we come into this week, I mean, ultimately we're in a long-term bracket from 10,750 up to basically 12,400. So we're approaching the top of that bracket. Um, if, right, right here, watching the bracket. Now, if we push out, you'll really have to watch and hold here. That can give us a push toward, you know, 12,800 area, uh, potentially. If, and that, if we come back in that though, that becomes a test and then sets us back toward these references and keep us back into this larger bracket, ultimately leading towards 750. I don't expect that all to happen this week, but you know, that's, you know, kind of the where, where that would put us in play. So given where we close the week, I would not be looking for anything long unless we could, you know, trade sideways and build some inventory. Otherwise look for earlier liquidations back to try to find participants. In fact, if we push higher first, that's more and more likely to push back in this direction. Very, very thin. Um, we'll be watching 930 where we are post uh, NFP as well as the uh, 12400 area and then you know below that and that puts us back towards you know longer term composites below us so really kind of interested to see you know post non farm payrolls are we above the 12400 or are we back below like 11 935 even back toward uh you know where we kind of kick saved from OPEX last week uh, as we you know finally continue to test that so uh overall you know buyers are control as long as we hold above 935, we've got a range from essentially 935 up to 12,500 is the expected range. And uh, I think there's potential given the catalyst that we could push beyond that, but uh, definitely one where, you know, we're likely to make some moves um, and see where we are relative to those composites. Given, given how that inventory has been thinning out, it doesn't look real great if we're up here in the nosebleeds when we go into those releases. Typically that will kick back to the downside, much better for the, for a push higher if we're nearer some of these uh, references of value. So there's energy to get us there. Okay. So as far as as this week, buyers above eleven eight fifty to eleven nine thirty five, the key reference eleven nine thirty two to twelve five oh nine, the expected range. We're in a bracket from ten seven fifty to twelve four hundred. Early tests higher look to be sold to find buyers. Early liquidations look for buyers at 11,935 and failure below 935 returns to 530 and ultimately towards 10,750. Uh, let's go to the Russell. 
shall we? And, uh, and see what mayhem there is there. Last week, we came in, we said, hey, the buyers are controlling above 1852. And I had 1894 as the key reference. We had GDP last week. 11, or 1834 to 1917 was key. Still in this larger bracket from 1750 to 1915, looking for a new balancing posture. And then if we were above 1904, then we could look for the 2023. I'm, I'm sorry. Then looking as long as we're above 1904, buyers are in there. Below that, um, we could get a little saucy. So let's go and look and see how the week played out uh, relative to that expectation. So here's last week. Uh, here's where we came in at that, that 1904 area. Here was last week's close. So, you know, basically as long as we're below 1904, that can push us back in this direction, but above that, and then we have the opportunity to, to break out to the top of the bracket. You can see that we had a couple tests. In fact, tried to get below, failed, and ultimately closed above. So that now gives us this area as the key area to support. Looking at the longer term chart, we can see how we're right there that uh, continue to reaffirm the 1900 and it really puts us at the top of this bracket that ultimately, you know, next spot that we would push out is going to push us towards 2k. So long as we hold above 1900, we'd look towards, you know, kind of the top of the composite up here. However, if we push and fail back below 1900, that starts to put us back on the direction of even longer term composite value and the bottom of the bracket. This is the type of week where that could happen. So, Expectation this week, get to that slide. So above 1885, buyers in control. Um, again, 1894 is going to be the key reference. We've got FOMC, non-farm payroll. So testing above the 1750 to 1915 range. If we can get above that, we're looking for 2K. Uh, below 1900, uh, 1885, below that, we start working towards 1850 and lower. So keep an eye on that uh, 1894 area as we get in there uh, you know last thing that i'll say here is you know we're, we're definitely kind of imbalanced to the upside right so here's monthly value um so we could get to our bell curve by going this way that's why again why this is a, such a key area for us to hold otherwise we'll you know backfill the profile this way so definitely a key pivot to keep your head on as we get into the week ahead all right now let's get over to crude oil the non-index product that uh, we like to uh, keep track of and uh, what was the expectation last week? So last week we were looking for buyers to hold above 79.50, uh, with the key reference being 80.50. And we had EIA last week, expected range from 78.39 to 84.89, uh, threatening to push towards new monthly highs and beyond towards 86 on further acceptance higher, unless acceptance comes below the 20 day first. All right? So we're always kind of have this, if this, then that kind of statement. Uh, looking at the monthly chart, here we're, we see a couple different brackets that are you know, dominating the auction for crude, and I just want to highlight some of these real quick. So we've got you know one bracket right here that's a multi-week bracket we've been in, but we also have this larger bracket that we're in, okay, and a very poor high. We've tested several times at the top of this bracket, and you know above this we start making a move towards uh, 86 plus. That's where that's coming from in terms of an expectation. We've got a balanced posture, five and 20 day are right here. We close below that, but we've got the 2021 or 23 VPOC or VWAP coming underneath of us as support. Uh, could be choppy between those above value. We'll look for another test up here and then push this way below and that way. You know, how did it play out last week? If we look at the weekly chart in terms of our, you know, expectations, uh, we were looking, you know, hey, as long as we get above 80.50, uh, we're looking to push in an expected range of 78.39. So 78.39 was the low up to 84.89. So we didn't get up to the 84.89. But we were looking for those new highs unless acceptance came below the 20 day first. And you can see we, you know, started the week, pushed back to the 20 day, ultimately spent more time. And the rejection even on Friday back below the 20 day. So unless we can get back above that, you know, path of least resistance is pushing this way. It could be a fight around that monthly VWAP. Uh, but if we can get back above here, then we'll look for a retest and potential breakout higher 
in crude that way. Very, very important that 78 holds. That's a that's a big time long term composite reference. Um, in fact, if we go and look at the long term chart here in crude oil, we will see um, this big node. So you can see this right back here. Really, really big node at 78. Uh, looking for the auction to hold that. You can see how we've been holding below this area, which then gets us towards 88 if we could break out, you know, using these really long term levels. So we're kind of in the middle, uh, very choppy, uh, very, very balanced. And that next move is going to come out of this out of this area uh, right from where balance is. So uh, in, in a bracket, looks for a push down towards 78.50. See if we can get back above composite value, which would then probably push us back in this direction. Overall, in terms of like the expected range uh, for the week, we have a uh, weekly. Let's just kind of pull this out here. So uh, expected range is 76.22. So down here, 76.22, up to 82.54. So that is the expected range for the week. Expect chop in here above this. Look for a push in this direction um, below. And we're looking back in that direction. All right. And so that is our, our expectation for crude uh, in the week ahead. And make sure to watch that as we go forward. Uh, finally, a question that came up is in terms of a development focus for the week, you know, is it okay to have a bias? Uh, you get this a lot. You see people that are, are concerned of like, should I have a bias? Uh, is that okay? Uh, th those that would argue against a bias would say, well, you know, you need to really just be open to whatever is happening in the auction. Uh, and I, I totally hear that. We don't want to become myopic in our view. However, we also want to be committed to a, a certain perspective. I don't know how many of you have ever had this experience where you're like, oh, I've tried the long and you try the long like three times and then you're like, well, the long's not working, so I'm going to go short. And then you go short and as soon as you go short, then the long that you were really looking for really plays in there. So uh, we find that having a form of bias is is important in just making sure that you're uh, conscious of where you're looking to position. So we use bias as a subjectively uh, based tool to declare who we believe controls the auction and at which price that control may be challenged. So what I'm always trying to identify is who's controlling the auction. So even if, if you go back and look at, at these slides, you know who's controlling the auction, and then at what price would that, ch that strength or that control be challenged? And we wanna know where that is uh, as part of our trade plan to keep us grounded because I always wanna find areas that I can join strength. I wanna join who's in control and I don't wanna counter the person that's in control unless I have confidence that they've been been exhausted. It also keeps me from getting into this myopic focus where, you know, I can I can know where I'm wrong. This is one of the things that's happening right now where you, if somebody got too caught into the the bearish narrative but don't have prices where they say, "Oh, above this price and we're stronger than I thought we were." Right? I mean, you, you ha and to counter to where we are right now. As long as we're above certain prices, Really, any price higher is possible. And the bearish narrative be damned, we can go to any price. You have to have a plan for every price. But having a bias or having an area in the inventory, which I, you know, for us is so helpful within the profile to know where are those prices where we're likely to flip control um, is really helpful to know that's a spot that I need to be aware of. And you know, as long as I'm either below that price or above that price, this is kind of who has got the control of the auction from you know, the last way. There's lots of other ways to uh, further affirm that. You can use you know, order flows and deltas and IB extensions and value placements, and you can get more granular around that. But just as a bare minimum, you know, whenever you're coming in each day, just say, hey, who, who's kind of in control of this auction when last we left? What price would challenge that? And then you know, how can I be on the out, uh, on the view to make sure that I'm aligning myself with who is controlling the auction. Again, very subjective, uh, but you can objectively make better decisions having that in play. Other ways to build skill this week. Uh, if you've not taken a look at the four questions that we think you should ask and answer before you place a trade, please do that. It's available on our website. We'll be interacting on Twitter, giving uh, additional color, <laughs> as it were, to these insights. Uh, if you want to have, uh, just take a look at what you're doing. Um, an audit, of the approach, uh, how your playbooks developed, give you some you know easy insights. We reserve free insight sessions every week. Uh, no commitment other than hey, we're just committed to help you, and uh, we'll we'll take a look. Uh, no strings attached. Uh, if you want to do some more intentional development, you can do that via our development pathway. We do offer a, a one week 
free opportunity for you to spend a week with our development team and the traders that are working on our development desk, building their playbook and using the profile as the key analysis tool to do so. And then to that point, uh, any of the, the software that you've seen here is from edgeclear.com or windowtrader.com. Be sure to check those guys out. Uh, they are you know, work angled and aligned to bring tools to help you make better decisions. At the end of the day, it's all about making better decisions. And then for those of you who are in the pathway right now, uh, we'll see you this week on our development sessions. Um, super proud of the work that everybody's doing uh, week in, week out. Uh, it's all about process, right? So we're, we're doing process over and over again, uh, thinking about things like bias, uh, knowing where are we likely to be uh, countering the control of the controlling player who is in control of the auction. And so this week, it's all going to be out about uh, who's going to control the auction after the big catalyst of FOMC and the big tech earnings and non-farm payrolls as we go from Feb uh, the end of January uh, into the beginning of February. Lots of year left ahead. Um, hey, if, if this has been helpful for you, I would love to hear what has been helpful um, or you know any other ways that we could uh, assist you. Uh, this is not an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, but there is success that's available for those who want to come with process just like this, you know, a weekly rhythm of doing an outlook and having a plan and knowing where the key levels are and and really writing it down so you can go back and review it because you know it always happens that you get into the middle of it and you forget and then the power of it's lost. So whether it be doing a process like this or having a journal, uh, make sure that you're kind of committing to notes because once the price starts moving, you can get sucked in and lose the power of it. So don't let the market do that to you. Hey, everybody, have a great week. We'll be back next week with another weekly outlook and uh, we'll talk to you then. All right, peace.